known for its violent nature and overwhelmingly large size will be put to the test against perhaps the most powerful man-made combat weapon of all time, Mecha Godzilla. In this video, we will take these two monsters and compare each battle attribute head to head to see who has the edge on the other combatant. We will compare battle intelligence, overall strength, speed, and all sorts of weapons that could determine who would most likely walk out of this battle alive. This will be a battle of legends, alien versus machine, villain versus villain. So make sure you hang tight till the end as we put these two legends to the test to decide who is the true Titan Destroyer. Corporal Build. To kick off this battle analysis, we will start with the basics. Who's better built to fight? First, we have Mechagodzilla, a titan built to specifically combat the real G-Man. Measuring up approximately 390 feet in height, this titan is no small foe. Considering that this titan is a walking machine, we do have to acknowledge the fact that this is nothing more than a fully armored metallic titan, almost immune to any piercing attacks, slashes, and punches. Nothing other than a supercharged atomic axe blade will be able to pierce this titan. It's also possible that this metallic titan is lighter than Godzilla himself, given that Godzilla was an extremely dense and heavy creature with more apparent mass than the mech. In conclusion, Mecha G is a giant fighting exoskeleton composed of a high percentage of strong and lighter metal alloys. Ghidorah's size, on the other hand, is in a league of its own. Measuring over 521 feet in height and weighing a whopping 141,000 tons, there is little room for doubt that this titan will dwarf the vast majority of other Monsterverse titans. In addition to that, Ghidorah's wings are estimated to be anywhere between 1,300 to 1,500 feet wide. These, along with the rest of its body, are armored with small metallic scales and small traces of aurum or gold. Yes, gold. This metallic composition is an excellent conductor of electricity, which serves as both a weapon and armor. We will touch more on this later. So who has the more resistant and apt corporal build for this fight? Although Ghidorah is heavier and larger, we can all agree that it is more beneficial to be armored head to toe. The size difference between these two titans does not warrant an overwhelming disadvantage for the mech. Not to mention the fact that Ghidorah will find it harder to pierce this titan. After all, Ghidorah is technically a vertebrate with no true exoskeleton, making it prone to pierce attacks. Knowing this, the edge for the best corporal build in this circumstance goes to the mech. Edge Mecha Godzilla. Intelligence. Before we start this section, let's make it clear who's piloting Mecha Godzilla in this battle. In Godzilla vs. Kong, this mech had two pilots, the first being Ren Serizawa, and the next, after a brutal takeover, this dude, nicknamed Kevin, Ghidorah's left head. So in theory, the minds facing off in this battle will be Kevin, plus a supercomputer, and Ghidorah's three heads. Now to intelligence. Mecha Godzilla is basically a supercomputer who is now controlled by this left head. If you know anything about this head in particular, this guy was the most inquisitive out of the three. A bit reckless and maybe not the brightest out of the bunch, but does retain all his past experiences in his memory. Remember that once Ghidorah loses one of his heads, this head still remembers everything that happened since Ghidorah has neurons all over its body and does not require a single brain entity to retain memory. In addition to that, this mech's AI has learned a few tricks thanks to Ren's piloting against skull crawlers for the past couple of years. Which explains why this mech sometimes fights like a human. On the other hand, we have the OG Ghidorah with all its heads. The most critical being this one. This is the main leader, the one in control, meaning that this head alone has somewhat of an advantage over Kevin in terms of strategy. Since this head was the one making all of the calls and fights we have seen before, it is safe to assume that this guy will be able to outwit Kevin's AI and possibly even predict reckless maneuvers that the mech might attempt. Not to mention that this Ghidorah has an additional two heads to make independent decisions if one of them sees something the main head doesn't. This one is really close. Since the mech's AI is capable of learning at a fast rate, 
but its lack of battle experience and the hardwired subordination to the real Ghidorah's main head gives Monster Zero the edge when it comes to battle intelligence. But does having three heads and a bigger body warrant a stronger kaiju? Overall strength. This battle of heavyweights will require a showcase of immense strength. Mechagodzilla left no room for doubt that it is one of the strongest the MonsterVerse has ever seen. Although being about the same size as the G-Man, the Mech was able to ragdoll Godzilla with seemingly little effort. In this battle, Mechagodzilla will be powered by the new source of kaiju energy found in the Hollow Earth, meaning that this Titan will be at full strength when facing Ghidorah. Its arms were much bigger than Godzilla's, giving it more reach and possibly capable of stopping a charging Ghidorah dead in its tracks. In addition to having strong arms, this Titan's legs are incredibly strong as well. This Titan was able to stay upright while Kong landed on his back and was also able to use them as a devastating weapon. If this is not enough, Mechagodzilla's impact strength could be increased with these. Jet propulsion allowed the mech to increase the amount of force when fighting Godzilla. Note, however, that it was noted by the director that this battle would have played differently if Godzilla did not face Kong earlier. Ghidorah, being a massive titan, is obviously going to have an upper hand when it comes to mass. But can this strength be leveraged? This titan does not have arms that can be used for offense, but it does have the largest set of wings the mecha will ever see. The propulsion produced by these wings is much stronger than the one emitted by the mech's jet engines, meaning that in an aerial strike, Ghidorah will probably be capable of bringing down the mech. Which brings us to the next weapon, the legs. These might not necessarily be stronger than the mech, but can most definitely grip better. This combination of gripping with legs, tail, heads, along with the flapping of wings, gives Ghidorah the ability to carry up to 70% of additional weight. So who is the strongest? Since these two titans are not anatomically built the same, it is unfair to compare these limb for limb. Ghidorah tends to use his two outer heads as arms, which could be no match for the mech's giant forearms. The mech's legs are weaponized, but Ghidorah's are used for gripping. But Ghidorah can offset this imbalance of strength with his wings. Therefore, the allocation of strength between both kaiju comes out at an equilibrium, making this a draw in overall strength. Agility. This attribute will allow you to avoid getting killed prematurely. In Godzilla vs. Kong, we witnessed Mechagodzilla avoid many frontal attacks by the G-Man. How? Well, it's because of these bad boys. Yep, these jet propulsors came in handy once again, allowing the mech to make airborne 180 degree turns in a second, allowing this titan to always face the opponent. Knowing this, it would be impossible for most titans to be able to attack it from the sides. Additionally, we see that for a massive machine, Mechagodzilla moves quite fast. Not in a clunky fashion as the earlier Jaegers from Pacific Rim. Its massive opponent Ghidorah can move quickly also, but once it gains momentum, this is the issue with overly large titans. It takes time for them to move. While you could argue that its heads are very agile, Ghidorah's entire corporal entity is compromised due to its large amplified mass. And by that, we mean the wings. In order for Ghidorah to fight effectively, he will need enough flat room to move around. This explains the reason why Ghidorah would attempt to flatten any surrounding obstructions before combat. Take a look at the aftermath of Boston. Everything seemed to be flattened. And in the Battle of Hong Kong, a lot of structures were still upright, suggesting that Ghidorah does indeed require a lot of clear space to fight at his full potential. But compared against Mechagodzilla, Ghidorah's maneuverability pales in comparison, giving this edge to the mech. But will he hold on to all mobility attributes when it comes to locomotion? Speed. As mentioned earlier, Mechagodzilla is not a pushover when it comes to mobility. This Titan can apparently move faster than Godzilla over short distances, thanks again to the jet propulsors. And since the mech was possibly lighter than the G-Man, this speed would at first seem faster than Ghidorah, at least on land. Ghidorah would also run fast since it would be running on technically four limbs. 
its snake-like movements would allow it to cut through the air easier than it would while moving upright, but might still not be enough. Ghidorah, however, could also deploy its flight capability to move even while close to the ground. This allowed him to move at speeds fast enough to knock Godzilla over. At full speed, however, this Titan can move at approximately 632 miles per hour. This speed would give Ghidorah 1 enough speed to retreat and 2 enough momentum to severely injure an unwary Mecha Godzilla. Knowing this, Ghidorah takes the edge when it comes to overall speed in this battle. Terrain Compatibility Before moving on to how exactly these titans could shred each other up, let's talk about terrain. This is important because in order for us to conclude a fair verdict, we need to determine where this battle is most likely to take place. Mechagodzilla could basically fight in any terrestrial location, whether it was urban or desolate. Additionally, some concept art of Mechagodzilla shows that this Titan was equipped with hidden water jet propulsors which allowed it to move and even fight underwater. Unfortunately for Ghidorah, this is exactly the location where he did not fare too well against the G-Man in 2019, and possibly past battles. If for whatever reason Ghidorah is stuck in the water with the mech, his only priority will be to escape so no real combat will ever happen there. Monster Zero is, however, an excellent combatant everywhere else. Urban landscapes, desolate glaciers, most importantly while airborne. While it is unlikely that Mecha G will take the fight to the water, it is more likely for Ghidorah to take the fight to the heights. This is because Ghidorah has shown his ability to bring Titans with him into the air at great altitudes. For this reason, terrain compatibility goes to Ghidorah, as it is more plausible that he will be in control of the battle terrain. But can the mech make this advantage obsolete using weaponry? Melee weapons. In the extant world of beasts, melee weaponry has been the top determining factor in determining the victor of battle. This is no different. Both Ghidorah and the Mecha are equipped with weapons that will leave any opponent critically injured or dead. Mecha Godzilla comes equipped with two strong arms that can inflict one of the strongest punches in the MonsterVerse, possibly even stronger than Kong. This new radioactive energy charges up every blow to make it all the more devastating and painful. An even more critical blow would come from its massive legs. One stomp could possibly crush one of Ghidorah's smaller heads. This arsenal of melee weapons does not end here. Mechagodzilla's most gruesome weapon is its scythe tail. Apart from inflicting blows that could send Kong flying, this weapon is equipped with sharp, rotating blades at the tip, capable of drilling through armor and literally blending any internal organs and other tissue. Note that this weapon has a very wide range of motion since it is capable of bending in very acute angles. Ghidorah possesses some of the sharpest teeth, but with an additional two heads. But given the metallic composition of the mech, it's unlikely that these will inflict any real damage to the mech. Ghidorah's tails also look deadly, but are mostly used as a tool, not as a weapon. The only limb that could inflict some damage to the mech would be its wing arms. These are capable of literally squashing buildings with a single swipe, meaning that this impact could knock Mechagodzilla off balance. But its lack of piercing capability puts Ghidorah at a serious disadvantage against the mech, which gives him the edge when it comes to close melee weaponry. But can Ghidorah even the score when it comes to ranged weapons? Ranged weaponry. If you were a titan facing Mecha Godzilla, chances are that you would get peppered with missiles before making physical contact with the mech. This titan is equipped with two 16-cell missile launchers on its shoulders, and possibly more hidden underneath. Although not fatal for a large titan such as Godzilla, this is enough to cause flashes and burns to temporarily disorient another opponent. These short-ranged missiles are directed by the mech's aiming mechanism. Once the mech fixates on a target, these missiles will do its bidding. Unlike the mech, Ghidorah does not necessarily launch anything similar to missiles, but summons something else. Before even spotting Ghidorah, it is certain that you would run into a Category 6 hurricane. This storm is caused by no other than Monster Zero himself. 
causing low visibility, disorienting strikes, and strong winds that can possibly affect the battle performance of other Titans. This, however, should not affect the mech by much. But this is just the beginning. Apart from creating storms, this Titan can expel an overwhelming amount of lightning from its wings with so much power that it could even injure itself. This energy burst expelled by Ghidorah must be charged by a nearby power source such as an electric generator or maybe another high energy object. Unlike the mech's missiles, this strike cannot be aimed but can definitely cause destruction in a determined radius. In 2019, this strike was so strong that it blinded and disoriented Godzilla for a good amount of time. So who takes the edge? We have to consider the fact that Mechagodzilla does not have an infinite amount of missiles, and it is unlikely that Ghidorah will get killed by them. On the other hand, even though this takes up a lot of energy, this lightning strike can be recharged. This weapon was also more effective towards the G-Man, giving Ghidorah the edge when it comes to ranged weaponry. But this is nothing compared to the next two final weapons these Titans possess. Blast Weaponry. We finalize the weapons analysis with both of these Titans' most deadly weapons. In GVK, we were introduced to Mechagodzilla's lethal Proton Scream. This energy burst is so strong that it can slice a skull crawler in half if the initial strike hits exposed flesh. If it hits the outer skin of a Titan, it will most likely cause painful burns. If exposed long enough on Titan armor, it will be able to penetrate and cut. Unlike Godzilla's nuclear blast, which can cause an explosive shock impact, this proton scream is so hot that it literally cuts with heat. What does Ghidorah have to counter this? Electrocution. Monster Zero comes equipped with a full suit of electroreceptors that can project its energy from its vocal orifice and onto any target. This gravity beam is hotter than the surface of the sun, but less concentrated than Mecha Godzilla's. Ghidorah counters this with an additional two heads that can strike at different or at the same target. The additional two heads can also strike different parts of a Titan and perform flanking maneuvers, something that not even the mech's agility can counter. And finally, because of its electrical nature, it is likely that enough exposure to this gravity beam might even cause power surges to the mech, causing its electrical circuits to fail. Both of these weapons are fatal in their own right and will be fully exploited if used correctly, making this a final draw in blast weaponry. We almost have enough data to determine a winner, but first we need to reveal one last thing. The X Factor. The existence of Mechagodzilla is due to the current Alpha Titan. Built to outperform and defeat the Alpha can only mean that this Titan, along with its AI, is hardwired to not fear anything. Fear is a neurological dysfunction, a weakness only found in organic beings. Monster Zero, despite its resemblance to ancient Hydra depictions, is not part of the Earth's natural order. That's right, folks. Ghidorah actually comes from another planet and does not belong here. The hard evidence of this comes from its unnatural ability to regenerate at alarming rates. It has been confirmed that as long as Ghidorah stays near a highly radioactive or electric source, this Titan will be able to regenerate any lost limbs and even its heads. Additionally, this Titan ability to harness energy from both Titans and objects makes this kaiju almost invincible over a prolonged period of time. Ghidorah's approach to this specific face-off will be a battle of attrition, waiting for the mech to run out of energy or even to harness power from the mech itself. The mech's main objective will be to finish this battle as quickly as possible to risk energy depletions or losses to Ghidorah. We are now ready to determine who is the ultimate MonsterVerse villain. Mechagodzilla with his metallic composition and modern technology takes the edge on combat build, agility, and melee weaponry. Monster Zero takes the edge on battle intelligence, speed, terrain compatibility, and ranged weaponry. Both these titans are equal in overall strength and blast weaponry. Mechagodzilla does not suffer from fear and intimidation, giving it a psychological advantage. His opponent, Ghidorah, on the other hand, possesses the power to regenerate and harness energy from other sources, giving a prolonged combat edge against the mech.
By compiling all of our data, we determined that Monster Zero is most likely to win a fight against Mecha Godzilla. But how is this even possible if the mech was built to kill Titans? By judging strictly on melee prowess, Mecha Godzilla does have the upper hand. Being unable to pierce or rip any limbs from the mech, Ghidorah's melee weaponry is practically useless even after an attempt to carry Mecha Godzilla off ground. The only way Mecha Godzilla could one-shot Ghidorah would have been to aim inside its oral orifice or eyes, or in one location long enough to pierce. It is likely, however, that Ghidorah determined that the most effective way to fight the mech was to stay airborne or at a considerable distance away from its superior short-range weapons. It is now when Ghidorah will deploy the weapon that defeats the mech, its gravity beam. How? Remember that Mechagodzilla is an energy-powered titan, meaning that its energy capacity does have its limits. A prolonged gravity beam or an array of heavy electrical bursts would make the mech undergo a critical energy surge, which would ultimately fry its control circuits inside its head, making it lose communication to its main command center and rendering it useless. Any unconscious mech would only proceed to get picked apart. All this without mentioning that any injury inflicted to Ghidorah would most likely heal. The only way Mechagodzilla would win is if this battle took place underwater, and if he inflicted a corporal injury fast enough to kill Ghidorah. Had Mechagodzilla been a real organic titan with the same composition and weapons, he would probably win this battle. Mechagodzilla was a weapon specifically designed to fight and defeat a Godzilla specimen. Ghidorah is not a part of the natural order, and does not fight by our earthly set of rules. As Ashiro Serizawa once said, the arrogance of man is thinking nature is in our control, and not the other way around. Do you think humanity will ever defeat the Titans? What would the Monsterverse look like without Godzilla? Do you agree or disagree with this analysis? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget, use the link in the description to play Conflict of Nations and get 13,000 gold and one month of premium subscription for free. Start fighting your way to victory in real-time legendary battles right now. Thank you to Conflict of Nations for sponsoring this video. Now, check out these other face-off battles. See you there or in our next video. So that is all for this video, and I think Ghidorah, almost got Q over, and yes, I had to use Q because the Mecha Godzilla I have, probably too big to fit on this small screen, my bad, so, yeah, Ghidorah will win, but who do you think will win, Mecha Godzilla or Ghidorah, Ghidorah does have the advantage, Mecha Godzilla has weapons, so, I guess, you can say that, I guess, Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Check out Goji Santo for amazing content. Like, analysis videos, and like in-depth fight battle, or what you call them, I forgot that word. So, yeah, that's it for this video. As always, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.